Hello and welcome to the Autoloons channel for another episode of Small Cars, Small Reviews. Today is a single car special and this is one of the most iconic sports cars maybe ever. I'm talking about the McLaren F1 and this is the F1 GTR, it's race car version. I've always had immense respect for the McLaren F1 and its automotive engineering but I've never been part of the fanfare. Perhaps because it seemed so perfect and nobody came close to it, you know, in terms of anything for almost two decades. In terms of delivering a pure, exhilarating driving experience, it's never had a true successor until maybe the recently unveiled T50, which is built by the same person who built the F1, Gordon Murray. The road-going version of the McLaren F1 was so amazing to begin with, and then we had the race version, the GTR, because as proven McLaren was in racing, this was their first road car. The McLaren F1 GTR debuted in 1995, and of its various successes, the most famous win was that year's 24R of Le Mans. The GTR took the overall victory as a LMGT1 category race car, built and tuned by racing team Lanzante. Title sponsors were Kokusai Kaihatsu UK. That's the famous black car with the UNO Clinic branding. This Hot Wheels model doesn't look as cool in this bright orange paint and like the basic F1 decals. I wasn't even planning on doing a video on the F1 GTR anytime soon, but once I found out that this was the 25th year anniversary of that 1995 Le Mans victory, it seemed only fair to talk about the car post haste. So let's get to know a bit more about this icon. Like the road car, the F1 GTR was powered by a BMW built 6.1 liter naturally aspirated V12 Look at it behind the driver who was positioned in the center of the cockpit. The engine, designed by Paul Roche, was mated to a six-speed manual gearbox and renowned for its extremely responsive nature. For racing, the F1 GTR had a shorter gearing for even more aggressive acceleration. The road car itself was pretty light, weighing a little over 1100 kilos but the stripped out GTR was even lighter at 940 kilos. Its lightweight nature combined with the 600 PS of power from that amazing V12 made for an impressive combo. The Le Mans winning 1995 F1 GTR hit the highest speed that year, 281 hour on the Mulsanne strike. However, the McLaren F1 GTR did not win at 24 hours of Le Mans again and remains one of the few, if not the only car to win the iconic endurance race on its first attempt. Thanks to its growing fame and popularity, McLaren eventually had to convert a few GTRs back to road legal status to meet customer demand, while some race cars were picked up by wealthy collectors. According to the internet, McLaren only ever built 28 F1 GTR chassis, and the others were upgraded from different specs. The Le Mans winning F1 GTR was actually the prototype test car, chassis number 01R and was retired immediately after its amazing win. McLaren still fired it up every now and then for press events with relatively recent McLaren F1 drivers getting to have a go in it like two-time world champion Mika Hakkinen. But for the most part, the UNO Clinic F1 GTR will be forever honored in the history books in terms of automotive engineering and racing achievements. That's plenty about the car, now let's talk about the model. Like most famous McLarens of today, this Hot Wheels model is also a certain shade of orange. This is the 2020 version uh, of the F1 GTR which has been in, in Hot Wheels uh, catalog for a few fair few years now and it's only offered with the exotic series five pack as far as i know for 2020. this one is pretty much a flat orange paint with a few black and white decals there's the f1 mclaren f1 logo painted on the roof just ahead of the roof scoop 
number one GTR. It's like the F1 GTR's GTR logo, McLaren badge. Again, it's very well detailed for this scale, I would admit. But this is one of the more dull versions of this diecast model. The headlamps are sticker versions, but you know, that's the, that's not some, I mean, that's understandable given the scale. The A details um, stand out most, starting from the front bumper vents. These which are like have the, they, obviously they're not perforated, but they have that finish that makes them look like, you know, they're textured. And then you have the lures over the wheels, wheel arches, and the side body contouring, you see these airlines, which were also present on the F1 road car, but obviously it's more aggressive on the GTR race car. Even this, like, it's a tough detail to indicate, but they have showcased the roof scoop and the spine running down the back of the car with vents either side. The rear wing is painted the same color as the body. Um, I'm not sure, it feels like it's the same, with part of the same metal die cast instead of being like a sort of add-on plastic. Uh, accessory so it does feel more sturdy doesn't feel like it will break off easily and uh, I mean could have been looked better in a contrasting color but the finish is very nice the wheel design does fit the car better than some in my opinion um, the paint finish the sort of like a muted gray it's it it does appeal to me who prefers slightly muted designs as opposed to like neon stuff all the time, but for F1 GTR, which is in a bright orange color, maybe could have done with a slightly more chrome finish for the wheels. I love the design part, though. I'm quite happy with those. The tail lamp design is pretty simple, as was in the case of the F1. There's a whole backstory to that, but we won't get into it. Sticking to the model part, it is, it has been captured quite well, that simplicity. And the same goes for the various went elements of the rear end of the F1 GTR. So overall I'm quite happy with this and the F1 GTR sort of rear end design was pretty simple. Four exit exhausts and a pretty decent diffuser. Kept it simple. There's a lot of clever engineering under the skin of the car obviously but overall pretty well. Even this little aero detail along the side is went right. It seemed to have a perforated finish but it's just because of the design and it's com it just gives this extra detail to an otherwise very basic Hot Wheels model. And these are little details that just make these kind of Hot Wheels so much so much more interesting and fascinating. In terms of the interior, can't see much because of the dark tint. Um, the engine will be behind this. It still has the iconic three seat layout because the drivers seat as you can see has been designed in the middle you can see the steering wheel and the dashboard design uh, being a race car obviously you didn't have any of the other seats you can just about see the driver's seat in the center there in the reflection there we go just about so yeah and obviously like the, the wiper integration is also a nice touch we're all a very decently detailed mclaren f1 gtr model so that's it for this episode guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you liked the Hot Wheels McLaren F1 GTR, um, leave a like if you did, let me know in the comments what you thought about it, what do you think about the F1 and the F1 GTR and the new T50 and feel free to subscribe for more content to come. Also don't forget to check out the Auto Loons blog where we are written, where you can keep up to date with more cool car content and F1 updates. Ciao.